Hello Valley viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Apache and we're taking our first look at the R map or radar mapping radar mode. There are four modes and this is one of the four. Now this mode actually came out about a year ago but it's our first time at looking at it. First, let's look at controls. First, you need to choose your site select switch. There are four options, fire control radar, obviously, which we'll be using out of interest. There's also helmet mounted display, link, which we'll also be using today, and TADS sensor. Next, once we've selected our fire control site select, we'll have four radar options or modes, ATM, GTM, RMAP, and TPM. Ground target mode, we've looked at before, is our default mode. Today, we'll be adding on our map. Later, we'll cover air target mode and TPM. Within those modes, we can change to four field of views, M, N, W, and Z, with scan, size, switch, up, down, left, and right. Finally, to actually get the radar to transmit or fire, we can either use scan switch single to fire a single radar burst or continuous for a non-stop radar burst. The way we're going to show our map off today is first refresh our memory on the GTM or ground target mode. We're then going to show the weaknesses of ground target mode and add on radar mapping. That will give us a live exercise showing the use of our map. So let's get started. Turn master arm on now before we forget we are here and we're facing north up this valley here. Obviously first we need to make sure we have equipped our fire control radar or should I say our mast mounted assembly. Next we're going to turn it on if it's not on already. So we're going to go to fire control radar here. We can see it is not powered so we'll go to util. We'll come down to here. Currently it's pinned so we're going to unpin it into normal. Usually we would wait for the fire control radar built in test but we're not going to bother so we're going to override it and that's it. All functional and ready to go. Back to fire control radar. As standard this puts us in GTM mode where you can see we have a top down display arranged in a fan so we are there we're looking that way and that there is eight kilometers away from us it covers 90 degrees of azimuth in total sticking with GTM to actually make it function first we need to do site select FCR currently we're on helmet mounted display so we're going to press that button and we've now site select FCR a quick reminder of the symbology on the screen we can rotate it in 90 degree segments, left to the left or back here and to the right. Let's keep it back there. Target will give us a list of registered targets, which we don't have at the moment. In terms of our elevation, usually you would leave it in auto. If for some reason you needed to take manual control of the elevation, which we may want to do later, you go there and then you use the arrows up or down. And if you want to turn it back, to auto you go to util and you go back to auto there back to fire control radar our current acquisition source is our tads which we are going to leave we can zoom in here but we've got nothing to zoom in on so maybe we'll do that later finally we've got c scope which again we'll probably show up later next we need to actually force the radar to scan we can do that single or continuous and i'm going to do it single go give it a few seconds to update let's see what it comes up with all right, it's ground target mode, so it will just pick up targets. It would not pick up any terrain, and it's found four targets. So the mission for today is we've been radioed in from a JTAC who says there are five ground targets in front that need engaging. We can see one, two, three, four there, all wheeled vehicles. The triangle is our primary target. The next to shoot is shown in the dotted diamond there. If we wanted to cycle through our targets as next to shoot, I could press that button there. I can now press C scope here and all that does is means if I turn my eyepiece back on I can see the targets in 3D in my eyepiece there let's turn that back off turn C scope off we could also zoom in press zoom use my cursor to move it down here we've covered all this before in GTM mode obviously and we could zoom in like that and then unzoom okay that is the GTM. Now the problem is GTM has only picked up four targets. Remember, they're supposed to be five. Where is the fifth? Well, that is where our map is going to come in. So next, we're going to press our map mode. Ping. What this has done has oh, what this has done is also overlaid the radar returns from the terrain onto the radar scope. 
The first most obvious thing is if we go back to GTM, it's arranged in a fan here, or a perfect one-to-one -one representation, which you can also see here. If we go to our map, it's now arranged in a C-scope. That's also top-down, that's also us positioned here looking that way, and that's also eight kilometers away, but it stretches the fan shape into squares, just how a C-scope works. So in terms of range, as we said, one kilometer, two kilometers, up to eight kilometers. In terms of azimuth, it's the same, 45 degrees left, 45 degrees right, and we can see it there. We could rotate it left, but remember, it will not update the display here until we rescan, which we're not going to do now. Well, I suppose we could do, let's just do it out of interest. Rescan to the left, and there you go, that's to the left. Back to the right, and rescan. So, back on with our mission. Remember, we're missing one target. Well, where could it be? With the GTM mode, we have absolutely no idea. But with our map, we get an indication because look, obviously you can see the returns from the radar shown in white graphics here. The biggest returns being the brightest colors. So you can see these guys here are probably infrastructure like either cars or maybe some lamp posts. The great thing about this is the situational awareness it adds to our scope. For instance, the black here means that there's no returns. Well, that's because it's a radar shadowed area, probably the back of a hill. Here's the front of the hill, from our perspective, here's the back of the hill. Why is that important to us? Well, A, because it's just a good idea to know where the terrain is, especially in low visibility, but B, well, it gives us a great idea of where our fifth vehicle could be hiding. It could be in one of these shadows. Let's assume, for instance, it might be in this shadow here masked by this piece of terrain here well i know at that point i need to move the helicopter right to allow my radar to rescan in this area here behind behind the radar shadow so i'm going to set it to continuous scanning now so it'll constantly update as our helicopter moves i'm going to take for my sins manual control i'll just get my wits about me there we go i need to turn my um my hands back on so i can actually fly all right i need to get my everything back in limits there and i need to get my bar control radar back sorry it's because i've been paused it's kind of hard to come back from a pause and oh there you go pause you can already see even a few meters that i've moved right i've now uncovered enough of that shadow that i can see one two three four five and it's prioritized that as our primary target so that's worked perfectly and it shows why the extra situational awareness afforded to us by our map can be used in mission some caveats sometimes the radar return provided to us on auto elevation is not going to be sufficient in that case you're going to go to manual elevation like we saw before and play around with the elevation as it updates to give you the best picture but in this case it's actually worked out pretty well the next thing is this is quite important the higher you are above the terrain the better picture it's going to be i don't really understand why that is but for some reason going up higher will give you much more clarity when you go down lower it's kind of stretching the radar return out it's just not as much clarity as well as that obviously we can't see very far why is that well because we've only got about three kilometers of view before it hits these hills and we can't see behind those hills obviously that's it uh, we've been tasked to shoot them i think i've got some uh, hellfires on i'm pretty sure i put some hellfires on so let's get to it we're gonna turn our eye hands on normal stuff we're gonna waz our missiles which we've done there i'm gonna press and hold the trigger boom off to go some missiles i might get the next to shoot as well let's see if i've got another missile yes i have there we go obviously that's just normal just like uh, gtm uh, last thing i want to show is the link capacity which is nothing new but it's just interesting to see so what I'm gonna do is actually switch through to my front cockpit here. I'm gonna quickly set it up. I'm gonna go uh, video tabs here, over here. I'm gonna go fire control radar. Uh, this guy's got his sight selected as HMD, so I'm gonna change that to fire control radar. Uh, I think I'm gonna get rid of my iHads display there. I'm now gonna press link, uh, which we saw earlier. And you can see that's now linked our tabs to our fire control uh, radar target which is that guy there that's all i can think of showing off uh, for the r map and the advantages of using it me again viewers sorry i forgot to show one thing and that is changing the field of view i forgot to notice that in terms of azimuth on our c scope we have these marks along the top here 
they show where if I were to change the field of view the azimuth field of view would be so we can cycle through them as we saw the button earlier we can be narrow like that or we could be that guy right there we could be that guy right there or back to our main field of view there I hope that was useful and bye bye